Okay, folks, so I'm going to walk you through how to do uh, the update, the firmware update on this. So the first thing we're going to need to do, turn the device on, obviously. Uh, once we get that powered on, I'm going to go ahead and hit the record inside the device so you can follow along with me here. So we'll start that recording up. And then next thing I'm going to need to do, I've got to establish a connection for the first time with the device and the StreamVision application. If you've already done this, you can skip this step and, and kind of skip ahead. But you have to have established a connection with the StreamVision application in order for the device to look at the firmware, you know, in order for the application to look at the firmware you currently have on your device and know whether it needs the update or not. So I'm going to do a long press on the side encoder button. I'm going to go down to the Wi-Fi activation and turn the Wi-Fi on so you can see down there on the, low, on the lower little uh, kind of status bar, so to speak, down there where the Wi-Fi is now showing that it's running. So I'm going to jump over here. In the case of this, I'll be doing this on an Apple iPad, but it's a similar process if you're on a Samsung. So I'm going to go into my settings tab. I'm going to go into the Wi-Fi settings for my device. I, you can see there where that Thermion is showing up right there. This is, I've never connected to this one before, so it's asking me for a password. The password is simply 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to tell it to join. And at that point, it's going to establish a connection with that Thermion. You can see there where it just accomplished that. So now I'm going to come back out over here. I'm going to come into my StreamVision application. Um, once that opens up, you should see where the viewfinder will become active here in just a second. Uh, I'll go ahead and focus the scope so that I can kind of show you that it's working now. Um, so like there, I'm looking through the scope. If I open up this viewfinder, you'll see now where I'm live through the scope itself. There's a light, a couple of lights out across the showroom. You can see the rafters are showing through a little bit. So. Um, now we've established that connection. Once, once that connection has been made, the reason that we're doing that is if you come over here into the My Devices tab, you'll see that there it's telling the serial number of that device and it's showing where we've established that connection. So now if I hit my check for updates, you're going to see where it's telling me that I don't have a connection. Well, I've got a connection to the scope, but in order to check for the update, I have to have a connection to the actual internet. So what I want to do now is I'm going to come back out here to my settings. I'm going to come back into my Wi-Fi section. And like here is this uh, Netgear 12 here is my local connection for Internet inside of my business here. So I'm going to connect to that. I'm going to come back out and go reopen the StreamVision application. You'll see where now it says the connection has been lost. So I'm going to tell it OK. I'm going to come back over here to my devices and at this point you can see I'm still on that Thermion XM38 there it's saying that it's on firmware version um, 1.00.047 there I'm going to tell it to check for an update it's, it sees that there is an update available so I'm going to tell it to download the new firmware it's asking me if that's what I want to do I'm going to click on the button that says download and as you can see it's, it's downloading the firmware. And this doesn't take very long. If you have a pretty good connection, it's going gonna, it's gonna to download it. And as you can see, it's working its way through uh, that download. Once it gets done, the status bar will go all the way across. Now you can see that that's been completed. So now what I'm going to do, I've got to reestablish my connection to the scope in order to wirelessly send that downloaded information into the scope. So I'm going to come back over here to my settings tab. You can see my device still sees the Wi-Fi output. I never shut it off inside the scope, so it's still seeing that. So I'm going to click there and let it reestablish its connection to the Thermion. I'm going to come back over here and reopen my StreamVision application. And now you can see it's prompted me on the screen. It realizes that I've reestablished the connection to that Thermion XM38 and it knows that it's got a newer version of firmware than what it's shown to be installed on the device so it's automatically prompted me do I want to install that new firmware so at this point I'm going to go ahead and tell it OK and now I'm going to click on the box that says install new firmware and it's prompted me again would you like to install the new firmware 
I'm going to tell it install now. Now one thing I will mention to you before you hit this, you're going to want to make sure you've got plenty of battery life on that scope. You know, don't do this if, if, it's, if your battery is a little on the low side, first time you've ever powered the unit up, I would highly suggest that you, that you charge that battery first. Just make sure that you got enough battery to get you through it. It doesn't take very long, but you don't want it dying in the middle. So, so I know that I've got enough battery on it to get me through. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to install now. And as you see, the status bar is indicating that it's actually doing its, its update. And I'm going to jump over here so you can kind of see what goes on inside of the scope as this is taking place. Uh, it's going to start and stop a couple of times. Anyway, as you can see, it's, it's already shut down once and restarted itself. Now it's giving you a status as to what's going on in the case of the update. So this is going to take a minute or two. It's going to sit there and go through this. It's going to constantly give you, you know, kind of some indication as to what it's doing. Um, here in a, in a minute or so, it's going to come up with a little status block and it's going to have like two blue lines that work in towards one another. Don't, whatever you do, like as this is going on, just make sure that you let the thing keep running. When it's all completed, the, the thing is going to cycle itself off again at the end of that and then power itself back on. So as you can see, that, that little status indication thing has come up now and you can see how it's working in towards itself. So it's going to go kind of slow at first and then it'll go pretty quick. And then once it completes this, it's going to do a, re, a cycle. It's going to come back up and at that point, the firmware will all be installed correctly. And I'll show you here, I'll start to record on the device again once that completes so I can show you how to kind of go in and verify that you've got the newest version on it. Um, you know, and this is going to be again important that this just came out today, it's what's going to add audio. And it, you know, as, as they were, would be able to make improvements potentially to the device, you might see some other uh, future firmwares at some point in time, but to be quite honest with you, Pulsar does a really good job of making sure their devices are operating the way that they're intended to operate when they first release them. So it's not like you're doing a lot of firmware upgrades and the process is really simple. So as you can see, it's completed there. So now I'm going to hit record and we're going to switch back to the device itself so you get a little cleaner view. Um, we're going to jump in there and I'm just going to show you how to verify that, that the firmware actually updated successfully so we're going to do a, a tap over here to start the recording. Again we're going to do a long press on that menu button. Um, we're going to come down here to device information. If you click on that to open it, now you can see there where it says uh, FW 2.0.011. That's indicating to you that the firmware has updated successfully and everything should be good to go on your device now. Testing the audio on the Pulsar Thermion, which is now working. As you can see, I got the audio or the microphone icon down there on the status bar. And I've updated it on this unit. And we're just testing out to see how it works. So, I hope that helps you understand the process of how to, to complete that. That will basically be identical whether you're dealing with the Thermion or the Axion, anything that has the Stream Vision application on it to do it wirelessly. It's a very intuitive, easy to understand process. Really, the only part of it that, that may be a little tricky is that yeah, you know you have to have first establish a connection to the unit itself, um, and and then you need to go and get an actual internet connection to be able to download the firmware and then re-establish that connection to upload it onto the device but I think you can understand that pretty simply. If you have any question at all on how to accomplish this or if you need any help with it don't hesitate to give me a call toll free 877-806-2977 uh, if you're looking for one of these devices or interested in it we sell them obviously www.foxoptic.com thanks a lot and have a great day